This is a time we need to ascend. We not only need to press through. Many people want to just put their head down and press through. No, the Lord is saying lift your head and come up hither. Not in pride. Lift your eyes to the hill from which comes your help. Every day you don't get what you've done. He showed you mercy. And it's new every day. And you dare worship anyone but him. And by him I mean Jesus. Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh, the only living God. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. I am Ambassador Chantrell Davis, and Jesus Christ is Lord. Today is February the 5th of 2019. It is 10.13 a.m. Central Standard Time. Bring your minds and your hearts in one accord together with me in prayer, for there is no time, there is no space for Jesus Christ and our Lord and our Holy Spirit is omnipresent, and we can come together in one heart and one mind, no matter what day and no matter what hour this is, for his word is alive, it is effective, it is energizing, and it is always enough. Bring your minds in. Focus on the things scripturally as I pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that we are alive for such a time as this. Father God, I thank you that we awake because you sustained us last night. Father, you said it's not in man to know his own ways, Father. So I thank you that as we slept last night, you kept us from our purpose. You hid pride. You sealed our instructions, Father God. And I decree and declare those blueprints, those divine instructions will come forth unhindered and unchecked by any outside force, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you have given us the wisdom from above, Father God. And we rebuke all earthly, sensual, and devilish wisdom right now in the name of Christ Jesus, Father God. We incline our ears to wisdom and apply our heart to the understanding that you give us this day, Father God. And we decree and declare that will come forth to us, Father God unhindered and unchecked by any outside force, Father God, for we know the voice of our Father and the voice of a stranger. We will not follow, Father God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray not only for myself, but all those who fall under the sound of my voice any day and any time. I pray that we be filled with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that we walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, that we be strengthened with all might according to your glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I pray also that you will give to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened and that we will always know the hope of our calling and the riches of the inheritance in Christ Jesus, our Lord, Father God. I decree and declare and prophesy over our ears, eyes, and lips and heart that we have ears of a disciple, eyes of a disciple, lips of a disciple, and a heart of a disciple. I decree and declare, Father God, the lips of knowledge, Father God, and the tongue of the learned. A grace, Father, a mouth full of salt seasoned with grace, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we know how to answer every person, Father God. I thank you that we speak right words in due season, and how forcible are these right words, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every mouth that is uttered, muttered, and chanted in any tongue, any language, Father God, against this ministry, against our mind, against our merch, against your right way, your absolute laws, Father God. In the name of Jesus, our progress, our productivity, Father God, our influence, our destiny in you. I decree and declare null and void, Father God, and I command those words back into the bosom of those who sent them with swift judgment in the name of Christ Jesus. Father God, honor it for your name's sake, for your holy word's sake, Father God. For we thank you that you are faithful and you are just, Father God, for we are the executors of your judgment in this earth, Father God, and we put ourselves in remembrance of that word, and we thank you that you honor your word. You look after it to perform it in the name of Christ Jesus and by the power of the blood. I decree and declare, Father God, the covering of the blood of Jesus and the God with ministry of preach me of what's not an echo, Father God. All those who have subscribed, Father God, and listened to your word and earnestly in truth, all those who listen to this ministry, Father God, and truth to hear your word, Father God. All those who have come for other reasons, Father God, all those who have been sent by others, Father God, I thank you for their uncovering, Father God. I thank you that they will hit the wall of the anointing, Father God. I thank you that they will be turned aside, Father God, for you said those who gathered against us would not be by you and what you would cause them to do is fall for our sake. So I decree and declare all those who have arrayed themselves spiritually and physically in any realm, Father God, against this ministry, against my marriage, against my destiny, against my productivity, Father God, against my influence, Father God, against my destiny in you, I command them to fall in the name of Christ Jesus for my sake according to your word. You said you would cause them to fall for my sake, and I command them to fall in the name of Christ Jesus and by the power of the blood. I decree and declare, Father God, any person, place, or thing, Father God, and entity in any realm, Father God, that has become a burden in my life, I decree and declare it is removed. Any person, place, or thing, or entity in any realm that has become a yoke about my neck, I decree and declare it is destroyed because of the anointing, Father God. I thank you that you contend with those who contend with me. You fight against those who fight against me. You see it a righteous thing to grant tribulation to those who trouble me. Trouble my trouble in the name of Christ Jesus. I decree and declare your decrees, Father God. And I thank you that they go forth unhindered and unchecked by the outside force, Father God. In the name of Christ Jesus and by the power of the blood. I thank you for your covering. I thank you that you fill us with your love and we are covered by the blood, Father God. I decree and declare, Father God, not only me, but all those who hearken to your word and hearken to your instruction, Father God. We will be at the right place at the right time before the right people and in the right state of 
mind, Father God. We will not stumble in the dark as the heathen, Father God. You have ordered our steps, Father God. And I decree and declare we will walk them out in perfection, Father God. I decree and declare overridden every time set of the enemy with the set time of the Lord, Father God. For our steps are ordered. I decree and declare your expected end over our day, over our way, over our life, over this ministry, Father God. We commit all that we are and all that we ever will be to you, Father God. I commit my thoughts, ways unto you, and I thank you that my thoughts are established this day, Father God. In the name of Christ Jesus, I thank you for the holy fire that is up on this ministry, Father God, that is dwelling within me. I thank you for the wellspring of wisdom, Father God. The mouth of wisdom, Father God, and out of the tongue of the love. Learn, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that I have an unction from the Holy One and I know all things, Father God. You have given me a mouth and wisdom that my adversaries can neither gain, say, nor resist. You are true to your word. You are true, Father God. You are faithful and you are just. And I present my body as living sacrifice this day, Father God. I cover all those, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that would hear this word and spirit and the truth, covering them with the blood of Jesus, Father God, including myself, to the full casting out and dispossessing, dispossessing of all darkness, Father God, right down to the molecular structure, Father God, to the full binding up and casting out of every contrary spirit, hiding in their flesh and hiding in layers of their soul. I rebuke and bind up the spirit of fear, doubt, and unbelief, and contention, and strife, and jealousy, and envy, Father God, and offense. And I bind it up in the spirit of rebellion, bind it up, and I cast it out, Father God, and I dismantle them, Father God, bringing them flat, Father God. For I thank you that we tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, Father God. I apply and appropriate the full armor of God, not just to myself, but all those who will hear this word, Father God, perpetually, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, that we quench the fiery darts of the enemy. We are victorious in you, for you are all the while effectually at work in us, both the will and do your good pleasure, and you always cause us to try in Christ Jesus. So we move forth in that triumph, Father God, trusting you and trusting you for our expectancy is in you. In the name of Christ Jesus, I seal this prayer, Father God, in the blood and in the matchless and mighty name of Christ Jesus, who is our Lord. And I say amen. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, oh, preach. Uh, I'm probably going to do a few today. I might be nice and change outfits. <laughs> Maybe not. But in the name of Jesus, thank you for joining me today. Those of you who are new to this channel, I urge you by the mercies of God. I got playlists for dreams, playlists for visions, playlists for prophetic words, music, poetry, and all of them are from the Lord. Y'all need to understand, the Lord will give a message. Our God is not only a powerful God, he's a psalmist, he's a poet. He has given me straight messages in a quick poem. And they are all scriptural, and I don't even have to look the word up. The scriptures just are all flowing through the poem. But in a natural way of speaking, I would suggest that you marathon on these messages. I'm not the only one preaching the word of God, but I know I'm preaching the word of God. I've told you before that we study scriptures. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What does that mean? What is he saying now through his servants? You have to hear the word in order to get faith. You have to hear instructions in order to be granted repentance. Okay. So do a marathon of these words because these words are from him. Why? Because he is cleaning up the body to receive the glory that is about to come down. I said before, if you are, you, if you don't allow the tangible fire of God to cleanse you up before this glory hit the same glory that's meant to prosper, you will kill you. I will say it over and over again. Many going to be taken out of her early and they didn't have to be. He said, excuse me, with long life, I will satisfy you. Okay. We judge the spirit of worldliness in the world of what we're fighting against. What's the spirit of the world? False love and false unity. They're saying love means you will let me have my way. Love means you will let me feel how I want to feel. They think they have to feel good all the time. We don't feel good all the time, but we press forth in faith. And we bring every vain imagination and high thought that sets itself against this true knowledge and we teach it to submit to Christ. We are here to turn the world upside down, but it is right side up for us. They are making changing times and laws to cause you to submit to what is invalid. They're not valid. They're calling wrong, right, and right, wrong. And now the main thing to do wrong is to tell somebody that what they're doing will kill them. To tell somebody what they're doing is wrong is hate speech now. So gird up. For we love not our lives unto death, for to live is Christ and to die is gain. And until you know that, you have yet to hide in him because you're dead already. I'm going to lead in with this scripture real quick. Let me see if my eyes can see it before I go because I'm moving by the spirit right now. It's scriptures people need to hear. You can't judge me. Don't y'all understand that because we're not judging is why things don't get fixed? Even people in the body of Christ, he says, when we are judged of the Lord, we are chastened. Therefore, we can be corrected that we be not condemned. The Lord has to judge you first. 
then the chastening comes. I've already given a, given a message called with you, my battle ex. I will use you to execute the judgment that is written, that is written, that is written up on the heathen. It's already written. I'm going to read Psalms 106 and 28. I'm just, I want y'all to read that whole chapter on your own because I want to get to one verse. They joined themselves also to Baal PR. We know what Baal is. It's going on in full fledged right now. Baal PR. And ate the sacrifices of the dead. Thus they provoked him to anger. Him, who's that him? The Holy Lord God Almighty Father, Yah, the only living God. There is none other. Okay? Provoked him to anger with their evil inventions. Evil, evil inventions. Every invention ain't of God. The plague break and a plague and a plague and a plague broke out upon them. What do y'all think these fires are? What do y'all think these floods are? I delivered a message back in 2014. He said, fire for, uh, fire, I, I named it fire and water to the, from the East Coast to the West Coast. And I said it would be repeated fires and it would be repeated floods and mudslides. And I saw tornadoes of fire and he showed me the timing. And believe it or not, that first tornado of fire that was shown was called the Holy Fire. Y'all think that was coincidence? I was literally taken into the fire tornado and saw flesh consumed off people's bones. And he said the people would be fueled for the fire. I told you before that it would start first with loss of property, then people would die. And that's exactly what has happened because the word of God is true. Let me read verse 30. Then stood up Phineas and executed judgment. And then stood up Phineas and executed judgment. And so the plagues were stayed. We know what that means. The plagues were stopped. Because he executed judgment. Are y'all getting this? They're trying to persecute you from executing judgment so you'll keep your mouth shut. You're basically being tried because you hurt feelings. Really? That, that's literally what you're doing. You, you're hurting feelings by telling the truth and they're making it against the law to tell the truth because their feelings are hurt. To tell some man that feel like a woman this day that he can't go in the bathroom with my seven-year-old child. Because he feel like a man this day. Y'all wouldn't believe it. I'm going to show y'all the picture where I went on Facebook. And it said I had to update one of my pages. I got Grace Ready Writer because I write books. And it said Grace Ready Writer is separate from the Preach Before It's Not an Echo page. And it had seven different choices. A male, a female, a neutral, a it. I'm going to show y'all that. Don't, don't let me forget. I'm going to show y'all that. Seven different choices on whether you was what gender you was. <laughs> yeah. It's going to get worse, y'all. Okay. Let's get to today's message. Because I just had to, uh, Yeah. God help, 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 help. Cause I'm gonna show y'all this picture I have here too. This is very, uh, a very serious message and it's very revelatory, okay? The name of this message is, Standing on the Rock, the Stones Cry Out. We are not of the New World Order bricks. I'm gonna say that again. Standing on the Rock, we know who the Rock is. The Stones Cry Out. With the stones. We are not of the new world order bricks. Before I start ministering, I'm going to show y'all this picture. And I'm going to show y'all the picture of the new world order and the uh, one world government place. We already know. I hope y'all can see this. Y'all see this? Okay. The stars. I'm, I'm not going to break all that down today. That's going to be a whole other different message. But I want y'all to see the people. See the people made out of bricks? The people are made out of bricks. I know many of you probably have seen this picture. This was a painting, and this is where they got the design of their building from. These are the bricks, okay? Even the people were made out of bricks walking to the Tower of Babel, okay? Let me go here. And we already know this is the United Nation. Uh, I forgot the name, uh, complete name of the building. And this is where this design came from. Okay, I'm going to go back. The original Tower of Babel, uh, uh, Babel is where the New World Order brick picture came from. Okay, let's go back to this one because it's bigger. And I want y'all to see the people marching to the Tower of Babel and they are made of bricks. Okay. Pay attention to this because there's a reason I'm showing you this. And you can find it on your own and I'm going to put it in the blog. You already know that. It will be in the blog. So I showed y'all that to tell you this. We know bricks are the same cut, made out of the same thing, made out of the same consistency. They built the same way. Nothing's different about the brick. That is socialism. That's what the new world order will be. One thought, 
one thinking, all agreed, everybody get the same pay, everybody do different uh, jobs and get the same pay, socialism, new world order, everybody line up in agreement, because that's the perversion of this world, worldliness is false love and false unity, we cannot unify with people in the world, he's talking about the body of Christ having unity, a false love means telling people they can do whatever makes them feel good, it's not the love of God, he knows what's going to kill you and he's not going to let you do it, okay? That's why as his children, we get chasing, we get chasing quickly when we go error, black children. Okay. Let me get into the scripture because bricks and everybody are the same. Think the same way, walk the same way, move the same way, believe the same way, come together in one mind. He's been trying to mimic the Lord because we come together in one mind in the mind of Christ. This is this falseness. That's the title. I'm going to read Luke. Okay. I'm going to start with verse 38 through 40. Saying, blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, okay, because they were praising. Y'all notice that was praise. They said, blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in the heaven and glory in the highest. Praise is a mighty weapon. You can't even be touched in praise. And some of the Pharisees among the multitude said unto him, master, Rebuke your disciples. They wanted him to rebuke them for praising. You know that's the devil. Have you ever been in church and you just praising, praising, and people get offended? That's the devil to get offended when you praising God. Praise is contagious anyway. Okay, verse 40. He answered, he being Jesus Christ, and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. I'm going to give revelation on that. There's more to that. Okay. I'm going to read it in a message version. I'm just going to read. Uh, Blessed is he who come. Uh, the king of God. The king in God's name. All is well in heaven. Glory in the high places. Some Pharisees from the crowd told him. Teacher. Get your disciples under control. <laughs> we ain't supposed to be under control. We're supposed to be radical. In your face. Rebellious to this world. Okay. He, he came to bring a sword. Divide. I didn't come to bring peace. That's why they keep saying peace. Peace ain't coming till he come. We got the peace of him to where we're not rattled in this mess we in. Okay. Verse 40. But he said, if they kept quiet, the stones would do it for them. Shouting in praise. Now, some of you may know this already. We are called the stone. It is called the stone generation. The rock generation. Rock and stone is interchangeable. It's the exact same thing. And I'm going to get to that scripture. You know, it says, look to the rock from which you are hewn. You are hewn from a rock. So you hew stones from rocks and each one of them is shaped different. Their own consistency, their own purpose. Even though we all in here, we're not cookie cutter. We got our own purpose. That's why we're stones. And he was speaking to Jews. They were Jews then. The disciples were Jews. He said, if they should hold their peace, the stones going to do it for them. Who are the stones? The people who were brought in under the name of Christ Jesus, the people who were brought in under the law of grace, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the people who were brought in outside of the law. Everybody have to come in by way of Christ Jesus, the stone from which we are hewn. He was a stumbling block for the Jews. That's why I, when people say line up on line, precept on precept, be quiet. They say it like it's a good thing. He said that they may fall backwards and be broken and stumble. It wasn't a good thing to be line up on line, precept on precept. Rule up on rule. Rule up on rule. This is the way we go to church. So that you can stumble. You can't do it without grace. Okay? We are the stone generation. Look from the rock what he meant. That thing had double meaning. The stones will literally cry out. Because when a mandate comes from heaven, that word can't return void. Which means it must go forth and accomplish what it was sent to do. And if you don't praise, because praise is what gets it in here. Praise on demand. That the rocks are crowd because what he's trying to get her is so important that he's going to go to somebody else. Like you, if you don't open your mouth and you feel an urge that you got to get up and do something, it's going to go to somebody else and they're going to get it in her. Let someone steal your crown. You better pay attention. If any of you saw a message I just did where he, it hit me so hard I had to pause the video and go up there and I went straight into Tahila praise. And I don't think it was birthing something into this room. I know it was. You have to learn to move and speak at the time you are unctioned by the Holy Spirit. 
That scripture had double meaning. It was literally physically speaking about the stones crying out, but it was speaking about if this generation was who was the Gentiles who would not cry out and praise about the one and only living God, the stones are going to do it. And that's what happened. It passed from the, uh, the Jews and went to the Gentiles and the stones started crying out because they believed him. Y'all better catch that revelation. Okay. Up on this rock, the stones cry out. I'm going to read Matthew 16 and 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art a Peter. That meant rock. His, his name actually means rock. And up on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Because Peter's name translated he, Hebrew is actually, it means rock. Okay. Grace nugget. Okay. Rock and large. I, I look up a little stuff like this and rock to understand that rock and stones are simultaneously. They mean the same things. Stones and rocks are equally the same things. The mandate from heaven will not come back void. His word can't. His word can't come back and say, hey, couldn't do what you sent me forth to do. So either it's going to go through you or it's going to go through somebody else. Because we are vessels, whether for good or evil. You're going to either be a vessel for the kingdom of heaven or you're going to be a vessel for Satan. There is no in between. Because to do nothing, you become a vessel for Satan. Okay? Indifference is not allowed in the body. We are to be confrontational. Whoops. Peace. No, we are to be confrontational. When it's things contrary to the doctrine. Contrary, when I say doctrine, contrary to the spirit. Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it will prosper in the thing whereunto it sent. What did I tell you the Lord told me? Not only our spoken word, we are his word. Just as Jesus was the word in the flesh, he came and dwelt among men. And then he said among the disciples and he said, he who dwelt with you is the word. I'm going to come and be in you. We are the word over and over and over again in the flesh. Those who are baptized with the Holy Spirit, you the word all over again. He multiplying himself. What's the difference? Multiplying, not adding to himself, multiplying himself. One times one times one times one times one will always be one. Most people have been adding one plus one. No, one multiplying himself. No matter how many he had, it's coming back to one. Okay? The word can't come back void. The Lord is trying to get something into the earth by way of your praise or by way of you. Pre praise, a praising life means you even go say what he tells you to say. He tells you to say it and you go say it. That's praise. That's worship. That's obedience. It comes by unction through mandate. Sometimes you have an unction. You don't resist that unction because the more you resist that yoke, it's going to get lighter and lighter. He saved you and brought you unto himself, which means you don't get to do your own thing. You need to be sensitive to his voice because he said, go to the left, go to the right, go over here. You are yoked. Even though we are sons or daughters, we have the garments of servant on in this world, just as our Lord and Savior did, though he was Lord of all. Okay. The man that has gone out and cannot return void. Any word he gives you, whether y'all receive it or not, when he send these messages through me and anybody else. When it's a sent word, a sent word is greater than just a word. I want y'all to catch that. A sent word is greater than a word. He said, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they be sent? Some went and wasn't sent. When the word is sent, it's more power than somebody just over there preaching the, Bi preaching the Bible and they don't even know the one they're preaching about. A sent word is more power than a word. Because anybody can pick up the Bible and start to speak on it. Okay? It will be accomplished rather through you or another. So when the Lord tells you to do it, the more you choose not to obey, the less you're going to hear from the Holy Spirit until you dampen them out. You're going to be given over, okay? It is mandated. The word is so powerful that it comes forth that it's going to keep going and transferring to somebody do what the Lord told them to do. But it ain't coming back saying, Lord, couldn't do it. And we are his word. I heard that audibly as I was ministering, and he said, and you are my word, and you won't return void. Catch that, the spirit. Definition of a mandate. The commission that is given to government and its policies through electoral victory. Electoral victory. We are already in a victory in Christ. So we have a commission. What did he say? A commission to go all into the world. Hello? A document given an official instruction and command. The Holy Bible and none other. Keep y'all perverted, twisted words. Y'all trying to change the Bible, but the Bible going to be in us. Y'all better understand that. Can't take that. Okay. 
to assign under a mandate the body of Christ, the great commission of all those who belong to the Lord Christ Jesus our Lord to make mandatory. It is mandatory for you to obey. It is mandatory for you to preach. It is mandatory for you not to be indifferent. It is mandatory for you to be contrary to the world. It is mandatory for you to come out from among them and be ye separate. It is mandatory for you to preach spirit and truth. It is mandatory for you to study his word. It is mandatory for you to obey his voice. I can go on and on. I can go on and on. The tongue gives or denies power of a thing. Catch this. The tongue gives power or denies a thing. That's why he means that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Your tongue is the tool that pierces the veil from the unseen to the seen. It doesn't even live until you speak it. Okay? That's why when you say negative words, a lot of people are reaping the harvest for what they said yesterday. What you live in today was your words of yesterday. You have framed your world with your mouth. I used to always say when I spoke a message on the food, I got a message called, uh, don't be no food. And I led in with a wise man speaks because he has something to say. That's a sent word. But a fool speaks because he just has to say something. Many people are just having to say something. They don't have something to say. Catch that in the spirit. Okay. The tongue pierces the veil from the seen and unseen realm. So no matter what thought, I've said this before, the Lord is constantly pressing you, being renewed in the spirit of your mind by the word of God, because that's him pressing his will upon you so that you begin to speak his will. You get so full of it, you start to speak it. The enemy's doing the same thing. Sex, drugs, alcohol, empire, house hookers of LA, house hookers of Atlanta. This all is so you can start to speak it. The spirit of worldliness has gone into the church. If it feels good, do it. If it look good, touch it. Sexy liturgical praise dancing. Are y'all kidding me? Evil. The spirit of worldliness turning the world upside down, which is right side up for us, which is the flipping. The Lord showed me that literally, literally in the vision. I watched everybody in the world fall upside down and he was recovering funds because the trans I told you the wealth transfer has already started. Praise steals the avenger and stops. Uh, steals the enemy and stops the avenger. That's Psalms 8 and 2. Uh, again, this will all be in the blog. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the avenger. Stop him. Uh, steal the enemy and the avenger. Because when you start praising, when you're going through, and if you can't say nothing but hallelujah over and over again, and I thank you for life, I thank you for love, I thank you for breath, I thank you for health, anything that confuses him. Because this ain't the response that's correlating with what I just did to them. I just sent turmoil and they praised God instead. Y'all better learn that principle. Okay? Praise is a mighty warfare. Uh, uh, I got a whole message on this, but here it is with the Chronicles 20. Believe the Lord your God and you shall be established and prosper. Okay? And they rose early in the morning. Okay? Excuse me. Y'all know that they have sent two armies against Israel. Okay? And Jehoshaphat. And so read all of Second Chronicles, okay? And you'll see this whole story for those of you who don't know it. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness and to and to Koa. And they were and they went forth. And Je Jehoshaphat stood and said, "Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. That's always first. Only believe. He loves faith. He said, be fully persuaded in your mind, because anything you do in doubt, that's what you're in trouble for." You could have not had full understanding on it and been in a little bit of error because you didn't have full understanding. But because you believed him so much, you're going to be quite shocked. The one that's toddling are the one in trouble. Okay? That's how many people getting given over. They putting their eyes on too much stuff because they really want to believe a lie. And he's going to get you over to that lie. I've watched it happen, y'all. People don't want to pray in the name of Jesus no more. And I never thought I would see that from these particular people. Okay? Uh, Jehoshaphat said, and, uh, hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe, so, so you can be established. Believe his prophets, since y'all think y'all ain't got to. But the problem is, oh yeah, I ain't even delivered that message yet. Smite, the, it's a wicked strategy to smite the shepherds that the sheep may scatter. Because the Lord is already allowing some wicked pastors to be brought down but in the midst of it the enemy is going to attack good pastors too so you confused fall on your face because if you end up attacking the ones 
fall on your face because the enemy is going to cause good pastors to be uh, uh, perverted. Uh, He's going to send out accusation against them when it's not true because the Lord is already allowing crooked pastors to be pulled pull down. But the enemy is crafty. So in the midst, he going to hit good pastors. So you confused. I got to stay on point. OK. Jehoshaphat said, believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. So you got to believe to be established. That means you can't waver. And that, that's just not believe in him. Believe on him. All the words that he say. Believe him. And so shall you be established. Believe his prophets. I'm not ashamed to say that's one of the gifts upon me. OK. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Believe his prophets and so shall you prosper. Appoint true worshipers. It's a problem. We ain't got true worshipers. Appoint true worshipers, dash, singer, and praise the Lord. This is how he went before the battle. Okay? And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that they should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army, before the army, and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. They sent the army out, the praises out before the army. Who's the army? We have a host of angels, innumerable company of angels that is our army. And when we praise, the praise goes before the angels. Catch that. When you praise, you set them loose. Not just decree in the word. Praise him. Set them loose. Okay? The Lord, and this is what happened because they did it. The Lord sent forth ambushments against the enemies. Verse 22. And when they began to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. These are the three armies that came, three armies that came against uh, uh, J uh, Jerusalem. And that's Jacob now. That's anybody who is in Christ. That's Jacob. That's us. You're Jacob. We're in one. Okay? For the children of Ammon, this is what happened, uh, Mount Sarai, and which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of inhabitants of Seir, even one helped to destroy one another. So the two armies went up and destroyed Mount Sierra. And then the two armies that destroyed Mount Sierra turned and killed each other till nobody was standing. That's what he going to do to your enemies when you stay in truth and stay in love. And love, I mean biblical love. Not this perverted love they talk about in the world where you don't tell nobody they wrong. And if you tell a molester they can't molest a kid, you hurt their feelings and it's against the law. The devil's a lie. Execute the judgment. And when you start crying out for judgment instead of mercy, you going to see stuff start being set right. Judge it. We do judge by the spirit of God. Yet he himself is not judged of anyone when you judge by the spirit. But many people judge by their emotions. This world wants you in your emotions. Laws are being passed because of emotions. That's perverse. The emotions that are starting to erode the absolutions of God. What's the absolutions? Male and female only. No incest. No lying, no cheat, no masturbation, no sin. Fornication. All this bring about the same result. These are absolutes. But they are eroding absolution in your mind. It's kind of the same theory of a frog. You put them in a skillet and slowly turn up the heat. He gets desensitized to it. He'll fry right in the skillet. That's what they're doing. Add a little. Get them to accept that. Add a little more. They accept the net. Add a little more. They accept the net. Till you desensitize. You already given over. The iron mingled with clay. Ah, we are not of the new world or the Greeks. Come often from among them and be ye separate. Stones are chiseled different. All of us are moving toward the same golden Christ, but each one of us are totally different in our form and in our delivery and in our gifts. Okay, we are not bricks. We are stones. And you look to the rock from which you are hewn. The iron mingled with clay, the new water, the bricks. Iron mingled with clay. This is what the Lord started speaking to me. Iron mingled with clay. The new water, the bit, bricks. Cut out of the same. They are cut out of the same. That is socialism. These are just notes I've made. Jesus has a rod of iron and a scepter. Okay, I'm going to go for it. Uh, because something he was giving me the understanding on is, you know, when the Tower of Babel was built, he came down and confused the language. But. 
What language was they speaking before he co he confused it? Because everybody was speaking the same language. It's the language we're going to go back to. It was the language of heaven. It was a language that Adam and Eve spoke. Everybody spoke it. But when it was fully set in their heart to do evil, he came and he confounded the languages. Okay? What was the language? It was the language of heaven. And it got baffled. That's when languages came into the world. That's when different languages began to happen. It wasn't different languages before Babel. But guess what happened on the day of Pentecost? When the Holy Spirit came down. And I, I don't have the scripture here because I'm just, yeah, the Holy Spirit came down. Then all of a sudden you heard people on the outside saying, how do I hear these people speaking my language? He's speaking my language. He's speaking my language. It was a reversal of the Tower of Babel. We all can have understanding in the spirit again. I want you all to catch that. By way of the spirit, we will understand every language. It was the realignment. Of the confusion of the language, but only by way of the Holy Spirit and the leading of God. Think on that for a minute. Okay. Beloved, look to the rock from which you are hewn. Isaiah 51 and 1. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock from which you are hewn. And to the whole pit where you are digged. Uh, and the pit from which you are digged. Okay. Look to the rock from which you are hewn. You are hewn from Christ. Okay? He made you and he will burn you. Keep your eyes on him. For 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you unto myself. We are not of the new world or the bricks. Everybody has to walk in agreement with this world. That homosexuality is okay. That pedophilia is okay. That all this perverse stuff they got going on. I mean, they, they had a woman in the pulpit in booty shorts singing gospel. Whoa! And if you say something, you're told you're preaching hate. You notice they keep saying love and unity. We must lead with love. We must lead by love. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you don't know love. You have no love. There's only one love, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father and one spirit. One fire, same fire. You keep lighting people. This strange fire that is going forth. You can't even be convinced when you hear people speaking in tongues. Demons got tongues. You better have the Holy Spirit. We are not of the new world or the books. Bricks, come off and from among them. Because he spoke to the original people who rejected Christ. If these should not cry out, then the, the stones would do it for them. The stones is the generation that is built up on Christ. The stones are the generations for the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The stones are those, Father God, who are moving by grace. If they should hold their peace, the stones will cry out. Stones cry out and spur not for the Lord thy God is with you. They will not prevail, though they may war. I didn't even post that because I took a screenshot and I'll pray about it. Well, supposed Satanist commented on my channel saying he was sorry because he had been working against my ministry for years. I'm still here. Because the Lord said to me, though they may war, they will not prevail. And you know what? I believe him. I will not shut my mouth. And it's a mouth and wisdom that my adversaries can neither gain, say, nor resist. They are warm with God. When you know they fighting him, not you, what, what, what they going to do to him? <laughs> Revelation 8 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not the plagues. The light of Christ, Jesus, illuminates to you a choice. This day, choose who you will serve. You hear me? You hear me? The light of the word illuminates to you a choice. Choose this day whom you will serve. That's the beauty of the light. He gives you a choice. When he said, if, you, if I knock and any man should hear me, if he should hear me and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him. He's going to give you the pros and cons. You're going to be blessed in all things, but you're going to be hated of all nations for my name's sake. He didn't say for me, for my name's sake. Catch it. He didn't say he was going to be hated of all nations for his sake, for his name's sake. 
That's why all y'all getting off on this Yahuwah and Yahweh. Y'all, I can't believe the foolty, the foolery, the buffoonery. This was the name that saved you, that gave you light to move from the world and to come into righteousness. And because you kept giving your eyes to it, he gave you over to what you wanted, that you should believe a lie. Do y'all notice everybody hate the name Jesus? The Hindus, the Muslims, the Buddhists. Why? Because he said you will be hated for all for my name. They hate the name. Witches hate the name. Demons hate the name. And Muslims can bend down in the, in the military and pray at their prayer times, but the priests and the other ministers are getting uh, uh, dispelled for praying in the name of Jesus. That should tell you the name is real. Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ our Lord. How can you be fooled? When he saved you and you're going to walk away, there's nowhere else to go. And you're going to find that out too late because the scripture says it's hard to win somebody back after they have tasted of the things of heaven and all that. And then you go give your mind somewhere else. You ain't going to get away from the devil that easy after that. I want y'all to catch this. Three things they are bringing to add to your faith. If the enemy can't get you to walk away from your faith. He's going to try to get you to add to it. What did Christ Jesus say? That the works of the law in your flesh make null and void grace. You make grace of none effect because of your tradition. That's the works of the flesh. Put the prayer shots on. Cover your head. Don't put no lipstick on. Can't paint your nails. The devil's a lie. You got liberty. Serve him in spirit and the truth and love and move forth. You know not to have it hanging out. You know what not to accentuate. That's wisdom. But we have liberty. You don't want to cause people to stumble. Three things they are bringing to add. I'm going to keep putting this in every match to your faith to contaminate it. Because like I said, he'll hold you back or he'll push you over. Either way it go, you out of time and out of alignment, out of order into darkness. Darkness is confusion. Darkness is out of timing. How can two walk together except they be agreed? How can two walk together except they be in the proper timing? So if Jesus is here because he told you to be here and you over there, you out of order. You're out of timing. You're not agreed. Modern day Judaism. <laughs> These are the three things they'll contaminate your faith with. Modern day Judaizers. And they were actually called Judaizers in the Bible. And they call Judaizer now. The law, the law bringers of every kind of those in Christianity. The Pharisees who teach and believe you must obey the law. Keep the Sabbath. Wrap your, uh, wrap your head in the towel. Burn your menorah candles. Go to church on this day. The, the, Paul said we are, we are not held to no day. We worship him every day. And we know who and what we worship. Every day. Because even Saturday is Satan's day. Saturn's day. This whole calendar is pagan. We worship him in spirit. Okay. The Judaizers. Number two. The modern day Romans. Catholicism. The great whore. Bringing paganism and mixture. That's why she called the great whore. Everybody can come in. We'll just add to this. Come on in everybody. We a red light special. That's why she dressed in scarlet. The great whore. That's the modern day Romans. Three, the modern day Greek. This is what's getting many of y'all. Okay? The Greek spirit is the gnosis. The very thing that caused the fire. He's going to keep you away from Christ by needing to know. Knowledge. Knowledge. All these words. Study, study, study. What this means. You chasing knowledge rather than being led by his spirit. I can just be vacuuming the floor. He'll drop a, the whole message in. I'll go type it out. Resting in him. I told you what study means. Study to show yourself approved. The Lord had me look up the word study. To meditate in. To take in information. To meditate on a later time. To take in information. To ponder. To take in, take, take in information for elaboration at a later date. And he said, I'm the elaborator. You just put it in you. I'll tell you what you need to deliver. Greek. The Gnosis, knowledge, spiritual mysteries, twisted formation, knowledge instead of relationship, seek knowledge instead of relationship, seek knowledge instead of relationship with God. Because when you have him, you have all that he is, which is knowledge and all true knowledge, true light. Gnosis, intuitive knowledge of spiritual truth said to have been possessed in the ancient Gnosis, Gnostics. These are the three things. Judaizers, modern day Roman Catholicism. And modern day Greek, which is the Gnosis, contaminating people. Okay? This is what the Lord says when people come at you like this. Rebuke them sharply. Rebuke them sharply. 
Okay? I'm going to read Titus 1, 12 through 14. One of, the, uh, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the Cretans are liars and evil beasts, slow bellies. That means they slow to even obey when they hear. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Rebuke them so they can be sound. Not giving up, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. So rebuke them sharply that they may be sound so that they won't give heed to Jewish fables like I've watched men. They didn't want to pray in the name of Jesus. No, I can't even believe this. And commandments of men that turn from the truth. Sharpness according to the power. 2 Corinthians 13 and 10. Therefore, I write these things, being absent, lest being present, I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord God had given me for edification and not destruction. This is to save your life before it's too late, not to destroy you. And if you take heed, you will indeed be saved. Titus 1 and 9, by sound doctrine, holding fast the faith, the, the faithful word as he had been taught, that he may by, he may by sound doctrine both Exhort and to convince the namesayers. Sound, the definition of sound. This is so you can be this. This is why messages like this got to come forth. To be sound. Rebuke them so that they be sound. Deliver messages that they would be sound. Give them the word of God that they would be sound. Definition of sound. Free from moral defect also to be that they would become thorough. Exercising it so that they would exercise and show good judgment. So that they would reflect and wait the sound argument and evidence. You're going to be evidence and wait that God is true. And not a liar. To be deep and be complete. To be in good condition, free from defect, damage, or decay. Okay? Again, prophesying that you will be at the right place at the right time before the right people and in the right state of mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and receive this word the Lord has given me today. Standing on the rock, the stones cry out. We are not of the new world or the bricks. We are not of the new world or the bricks. They are trying to make us of the bricks of the new world order. And that is not what the Lord has called us to be. We are looking to the rock from which we are hewn. The only living God, Christ Jesus. Many of you are being given over mainly with this gnosis. I've watched people. They keep giving too much attention to the names. You, you can't say that name. You can't say it. And if you keep doing it. You're going to be given over. I can't forget the name that saved me. Who I watched transform me. Who I watched fill me with fire. Who I watched cast demons out 1,500 miles away. Who has changed me from the inside out. Who has endued me with power and gave me joy and unshakable faith. And I'm suddenly going to think the name ain't good no more. When you go to pray over your child when they're sick, you, you get confused. Is it this name? Is it that? You might as well just shut your mouth. You have no power. That's what it was all about. That's why you don't take it in. Don't put your eyes on it. Don't put your ears on it. I don't. I don't. I won't budge. It's different when people heard it from somebody else. He told me. And I won't move. Don't you send me nothing. Because not only will I delete it, I will block you from everything I minister on. Receive that. The Lord said, you don't bid them Godspeed. When someone comes to deceive you, when you send me stuff, you're trying to deceive me. You don't bid them Godspeed nor shake their hand. That's like slamming the door in your face. Blah. That's all I got for you when you come to my channel with that mess. I know who I worship. He showed me too much. That's the difference between those who know him. It's like mixing sand together. You can't separate them. It'll never happen. We are not of the new world or the bricks. Y'all better pay attention to this. We are not of the new world or the bricks. And that's what they're trying to get you. Stand on your faith. What the Lord says wrong, you say is wrong. This, this, this community that they're trying to build, look at this mess. I always got something pop up. I did not do that. Well, I got the whole Babylon and everything up there. <laughs> These new world are the bricks that they try to get you to form into them people. Think how we want you to think. Accept our perversion. If it hurts our feelings, it's against the law for you to speak it. The devil's a lie. Hold fast to your confession of faith. He who is faithful is true. He not coming back for no broke down, busted, and disgusted church. He going to wreak havoc. We going to turn the world upside down. Nobody will be able to stop it. 
Prepare yourself for this glory. Receive this instructive word. Share this word. Don't be stingy. People, share it. Because either you're trying to draw disciples after Christ or you're trying to just draw them after yourself. And those who have a problem sharing other people's stuff, you're trying to draw them after yourself. You're not trying to make them hear the true word. Take this message before the Lord. I'm going to end this now. Again, this is standing on the rocks. The stones cry out. For we are not of the new world or the bricks. Come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. He about to tear it up. Grace be with you. I love you all. Thank you for joining us today on Preach. Be a voice, not an echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.